Welcome back. Katya Grace is next. She went to the Australian National University where she studied human ecology and science communication. Her honors thesis was on anthropic reasoning and the Fermi paradox. She has broad interests, including signaling theory, anthropic reasoning, and the history of technology. And she has worked on AI forecasting and strategy since 2013, when she realized that you don't need a PhD for that. <laughs> Today, she blogs at Meta Euphoric and is part of the AI Impacts Project at Miri. Please join me in welcoming Katya Grace. Hello. Um, uh, one important question I would like to answer today, uh, or help answer, is what can a person do to help with AI risk if they don't have a technical background or like that much interest in getting out of bed, um, and that sort of thing? If, uh, if that's of interest to anyone, I think you're in luck. Um, if it's not of interest to you, I think you're also in luck because I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to tell you about some things we've been doing at AI Impacts. And I think uh, these are good examples of the kinds of things you can do if you're in that situation. Um, but I'm just going to talk about them. All right. So one question that's good to address at the start of trying to forecast AI is how much hardware and software are contributing to overall progress in AI. Um, so I've tried to answer that a bit in the past. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that research now, but it came out basically uh, hard to tell the difference between 50-50 uh, and whatever the real answer is. Um, so AI Impacts just ran a really big survey of machine learning researchers. Um, the, the, machi the machine learning researchers who, are, who publish in uh, top machine learning conferences. And so we got a chance to ask them what they thought. Um, and this is the distribution of their answers uh, in the top for um, uh, how much less AI progress would we have if there had been half as much progress in algorithmic progress, uh, sorry, half as much algorithmic progress over the last uh, decade. Um, as you can see, they don't know the answer. Or it's, uh, there's a very wide distribution of views there with 50% uh, less progress if there was 50% less algorithmic progress being popular. Um, and the, uh, I've given you an example of the question there, which is the one for hardware. Uh, if there was half as much hardware progress, how much worse would uh, overall AI progress be? We can see that's also pretty spread out, though uh, we would lose 80 to 90% of the progress is quite popular. So it seems like hardware progress is um, probably uh, reasonably important, and a bunch of people think it's very important. Um, so we've looked some at uh, hardware in particular and what's going on with it, since it seems to be important. We were interested in how much hardware there is in the world altogether, uh, which seems like the sort of thing someone might uh, have been keeping track of. And someone was, actually. Um, uh, one professor checked in 2007 and wrote a paper about it. Uh, I, I think he actually went out and and like tracked down a lot of different pieces of hardware and like counted them all up and also figured out how fast he thought hardware was uh, growing in the world. And then someone else later on projected forward till like 2015 how much hardware there should be in the world. And so we were excited to find this and we were going to use these numbers. And then since we had also uh, checked what the, the current cheapest price of hardware is, we, we checked how much all of this hardware should be worth that is in the world. And it turned out that it should be worth somewhere between 40% of all of the value in the world and like f at least 400%, I think. Um, so that didn't seem very plausible. And we went back and looked at it more. Um, and, and these are the numbers we came up with, which uh, perhaps don't mean very much. Um, but uh, we can put it in supercomputer equivalents, and then it means slightly more. Or um, I like to put it in terms of uh, human brain equivalents, because that's actually relevant to uh, our concerns about AI. Often people are interested in what would happen if we did have very good AI and it managed to hack a lot of um, uh, hardware and take it over and turn it into more AI. So here we have a combination of um, the estimates of how much hardware there, uh, there is in the world and also people's estimates of how much hardware uh, a brain is worth. Um, it's very hard to tell how much hardware a brain is worth because um, 
we don't actually know how to turn hardware into anything like brains, um, which is why we don't have AI. Uh, so we want to measure it in terms of floating point operations per second often. Uh, and floating point operations are something like multiplications, um, and, and we don't know how anything that the brain is doing is like multiplications necessarily. Uh, so the estimates here vary by, I think, 12 orders of magnitude, uh, which, which you might think is really bad, but I think uh, it's better than nothing. It does rule out part of the space that we might have thought possible. Um, but putting these things together, uh, uh, in, this, in this figure, you can see the, the horizontal line there that's dark is the current world population. And the other lines are different um, sort of scenarios for if you turned uh, the, uh, all of the world's computing hardware into um, uh, AI that's about as efficient as the human brain at sort of using hardware to get computations. Um, so at the moment, in the sort of middle scenarios, we have like you'd get about 1,000 people, I think, if I'm reading that right. Um, so uh, if, if that happened, you might not expect that to cause like an intelligence explosion or something, as people have speculated. Though in the future, you might, or if we're very wrong about uh, how much hardware is in the brain, um, or how much hardware the brain is equivalent to in some sense. Um, so we're pretty interested in the how much hardware is a human brain equivalent to um, for this sort of reason. So we looked into it more ourselves. Uh, a better way, perhaps, to measure how much uh, hardware the brain is equivalent to is to, to count how many um, messages are being passed between uh, neurons in the brain or uh, some sort of equivalent thing in a computer because we can actually tell what is going on there. So there's this measure, traversed edges per second, that is used for supercomputers, and it's much easier to, to put the brain into a similar, um, into, into a similar sort of metric. And so using this, uh, we came up with the estimate that the brain is uh, about 0.18 to 6.4 times 10 to the 14 traversed edges per second, which uh, is again not that meaningful, but it means it would cost about $4,700 to $170,000 an hour and therefore be like well outside what anyone would pay for a brain. But at, at the rate that these things seem to be getting better, it means that we're actually very close to where um, human-level hardware, in some sense, is uh, the, the same price as a sort of expensive human. So in the scenario where hardware matters a lot, uh, you might expect that in the next few years, uh, the amounts of hardware that people can afford are um, as impressive as a human, almost, or like it doesn't take very long to get the software that makes that work. Um, so that, that's one kind of way we might expect things to happen soon, though on the other hand, it might be that software does matter a lot. Um, in the survey that we had recently, there were some other signs that thing might, think some interesting things might happen soon. For instance, uh, here are uh, a whole list of very concrete, uh, narrow things that we asked the machine learning researchers when they thought they would happen. Um, and uh, you can see the 10-year mark at the very top there. Uh, mo most of these things they expect to happen in less than 10 years. There, there is uh, there's some confusion here from different framing effects that I haven't talked about. Um, you can see truck drivers there and retail salespeople uh, both seem to soon be at risk, as we've noticed for truck drivers at least. Um, Another person at risk is Taylor Swift. Um, we asked uh, when machines would be able to produce a song that is indistinguishable from a new song by a particular artist, for instance, Taylor Swift, uh, as, as discerned by dedicated Taylor Swift fans, say. Um, and in the top row, you can see that uh, the probability in 10 years, people are sort of spread out in their views, but more than half of people uh, thought that this would happen in less than 10 years. And then by 20 years, people are mostly agreeing that it's, uh, it's going to happen. And by 50 years, they're pretty sure. Um, so I think this is interesting, uh, in part because like, if, if a pop star stops being a business you can have, that's, uh, that will be interesting for the world. We also asked when AI would be able to do uh, everything that humans can do. And here we have a picture of lots of uh, particular predictions that people sort of implicitly made. We actually asked them for three different points in their, um, 
in their probability curve and then sort of put in the rest of the line between them. But all these gray lines are roughly different people's predictions for something like uh, an AI that can um, do every task that a human can do. What are the chances of that in different years? Um, and so as you can see, the, uh, the different respondents have very different answers to this. And from that, you can probably infer that they're not, uh, they're not very accurate, um, just because they disagree terribly. But there's this idea of wisdom of crowds or something, where you might hope that if there are lots of very inaccurate forecasters, you can uh, average all of their predictions and get some sort of accurate average. Uh, which is what people have mostly tried to do with this kind of thing. And that red line in the middle is an average, um, which I guess says there's like a 50% chance of uh, machines that can do everything that a human can do in about 50 years. Um, but a problem with this is uh, in the same survey that we ran, we asked about several particular occupations, um, like truck drivers and AI researchers and uh, I think retail people. Um, and then at the end of that, we asked when they thought all of the professions could be automated. And uh, the answers that they gave to when everything could be automated after thinking about those other professions are much later than the ones that they would usually give for just being able to do everything. So that's the, the orangey line shown here. Or, or there are two different orangey lines, actually. So, there were four different framings. Um, the, the two with stars at the bottom are where we asked people, um, what do you think the probability will be in 20 years, instead of saying, what do you think the year will be in which there's a 50% probability or something? And across the board in all of these questions, they gave later answers if we asked for the probability in a certain year instead of the year for a certain probability. Um, but there was a... Uh, this much bigger difference between just asking straight out about all of the tasks or asking um, about occupations first. Uh, and I guess we predicted there would be some difference, but not such a huge difference. So it seems like now we can't really say, well, these, uh, these estimates we usually have are just like noisy and we can average them because there are clearly huge biases happening but, uh, between different framings. And we're not really sure which ones we should trust. But um, the other surveys that have been done in the past have mostly been uh, using the, the, the most, uh, the soonest framing here, the, the blue one with circles. Uh, so this is somewhat good news if you don't want AI to come very soon, uh, in that any other way you could ask the question would get a later answer. Um, though it's bad news for it uh, being good to listen to these things at all. So uh, this means I'm more inclined at this point to, to trust these other kinds of complicated estimates we might come up with from uh, figuring out hardware timelines and how much hardware matters or software matters. This is still somewhat interesting, I think, because if, if things were coming very soon, you might expect, like, if this recent machine learning boom was about to lead to the world being taken over by AI, you might expect that um, the machine learning people would have noticed this more. Or, like, I would not be surprised in that circumstance if a lot of machine learning people were saying, oh, wow, it's about to happen. And uh, it seems like very few of them are. So that's at least some evidence against that. So if we get to human level intelligence at some point, there's still a question of what will happen then. And some of these other things about uh, how much different inputs might affect progress, like whether it's software or hardware, um, can, can feed into some sort of model of whether an intelligence explosion uh, where uh, AI progress is fueled by AI uh, progress and the, uh, yeah, where there are effectively more and more people working on AI because they are AIs themselves. Uh, we could figure out something like that, but we have not done it yet. Um, but some evidence we have about uh, how fast we should expect to go from human level intelligence to vastly superhuman intelligence as uh, various AI risk uh, concerns rely on um, is from uh, going from human, going from normal human level to superhuman level in other areas. So, I think in the past, um, I think Eliezer Yudkowsky has argued that uh, of these pictures in the top, we should prefer the one on the right, where uh, the entire range of humans 
is actually very close to one another. It's not really the case that uh, stupid people are down near uh, chimps and Einstein is way up near God or something. Um, that's just sort of anthropocentrism. Uh, because a whole lot of evolution happened before we got to idiots and then not very much evolution happened uh, getting to Einstein, that sort of thing. Um, and I think that's often been accepted. But if we look at something like chess, uh, we, we got to bad human chess levels in like 1965, and then it's been very gradually improving since then and, until uh, superhuman levels in like 1998 or something. Um, and similar things are true in other games here at least, like in Go and Checkers it took 13, 40 years. I think physical manipulation is a bit ambiguous, but it seems like we're hanging out in the not very good range for a long time. And uh, Jeopardy looks like it would have taken at least like 10 or 15 years to cross the entire space. Um, so I, I think we haven't searched very well for all of the cases, and since a lot of these are games, they might be special. But I think this is pretty interesting evidence about whether you should expect that. So if you want to hear more about this kind of research, we have it at airimpacts.org. Um, and we also have a sort of um, knowledge base with lots of uh, reference articles. Like if you have a question like, how much hardware is there in the world? We have a page about that. Um, if you're interested in doing this kind of research, uh, I think there's a lot of it to be done. We have a really long research agenda, which uh, isn't really an agenda because we won't get around to it before there is AI. But um, if, if you want to do some of it, you can talk to me or you can look at it on the internet or bits of it. Uh, or you can talk to a variety of other people here who are saying similar things. Um, or you can just like do it and after you've done it, you can put it on the internet and people look at it. Um, yeah, thank you.